Welcome to the Manor Born. Join us on our journey as we bring Moss New Manor back to life. Thanks for joining us again this week. Um, it's been a bit of a quiet week at the Manor in, in terms of uh, renovation, um, mainly because it's been amazing weather outside. So the weather um, for the last few weeks has been horrendous, but it, it's completely changed. The sun is out, it's in the high 20s, early 30s, um, and so we spent a lot of time outside. Uh, in, in addition to that, we've also had our friends from Borneo, we've had our friends from Scotland, and uh, various children here in the, in the house. So um, nothing really to show you in terms of um, our renovation, but we thought we'd just do a quick special episode um, of some of the food that we've been having over the last couple of weeks, um, mainly because there's so many things that we've videoed that were food that we thought we'd just put them together in one small episode. So, uh, bon appétit! One of the things that I love about living in the countryside, it doesn't have to be France, but uh, general countryside, is one of our neighbours turned up and asked us, do we want this leg of wild boar? Of course we said yes, and uh, spit roasted. One of my many passions is going out and finding old items that were used in the kitchen. Um, and I've started sort of a mini collection while I've been here in France. And this um, I'm desperate to use. So this was picked up in a local uh, Bracant. It is a clockwork um, French rotisserie or um, rotisserie spit. It's 19th century, beautiful clockwork mechanism inside. It has two holes here for different bars and um, a sort of a spit bit that goes on the other end so the, the rod goes between them. It is clockwork and so you can turn this handle which turns the clockwork mechanism which rotates these lovely spits and we're going to take that piece of bore and we're going to put it on the barbecue um, and we're going to use this spit to do so. You'll notice here that one of the things I haven't done, and I sort of have this sort of pet hate really, is people take things like this and they strip them right the way back um, and make them almost like they're new again. I quite like the fact that it's got a bit of patina to it. Um, and also this is going to go over a fire, so I don't want to do too much to this because um, it's going to get ruined over the fire. So I've speared the joint um, with the spit roast itself um, and given it a good rubbing with salt and pepper. And uh, now we're going to add it to the fire. So we have a lovely, nice fire going. Um, I, I think I've said before, I prefer to use uh, wood when I'm cooking out here in the barbecue. Um, it gives a really nice smoky flavour and it's a bit more traditional. The loin is slowly turning and I have a drip tray here to catch any fat that's going to come off and I can put some potatoes in that later. see here the spit roast is doing a great job regardless of it being over 100 years old. I base the meat every 20 minutes half an hour or so and this is just a basic beer, cayenne pepper, salt pepper, bit of olive oil in there, bit of apple cider vinegar, keep it nice and moist on the inside. With the spit wonderfully turning around I was able to relax in the hammock with my book. I just had to get up every 20 minutes or so to keep the meat basted. We are halfway into the process of just had another lump of old staircase and we've got some roast potatoes that are lovely, um, getting all the dripping for the meat as it goes around. So it's had half an hour to rest now after coming off the barbecue, um, or the spit should I say, and let's see what it comes like. I put together a simple white wine, mustard and caper sauce, which I was able to pour over the meat just before we ate it. Fantastic. We are back in the long air again today. as we collect the resources for all the things we need for tonight's meal. Today, we're going to be creating a Cambodian hill of fire and I need these two burners. And we also need this box, which hopefully 
inside. Yes, it does. It has these two amazing things. So the first item we need is this simple butane gas burner. It's very, very simple. It has a butane bottle there in the side um, and it uh, gives a really nice, powerful gas uh, for, for cooking. And what we'll be doing is putting this on. I don't know if it comes out quite well. You can see there, it's a slight sort of hill. Um, and, and the basic or the perimeter of this is that this area here will be full of a gravy, um, just an ordinary sort of a, a, a bouillon cube and, and hot water to start with. And then when this heats up, we cover it in oil. And then you have little tiny pieces of meat and you cook them on there. And then in the gravy, all the juices and the meat go into it, which gives the gravy a really lovely taste. You then put prawns and noodles in the gravy. You can put pak choy or um, some watercress or salad items. They can go in there as well. They'll cook lovely. And all you do is you just keep uh, the, the top there nice and oiled. This one um, is looking very brown and um, it's, it's had a lot of use. And this Cambodian hill of fire we actually got um, when we were in Cambodia in 2011. Um, it was really cheap. It worked out with the exchange rate, I think it's about 50p. And we've had two of these ever since. We have our friends from Borneo staying and the children desperately wanted to be in this video. We like the burners for the Cambodian hill of fire. We thought it'd be fun to get the children who are staying with us to try some escargot. Um, five euros to put it in your mouth and have a good old swirl round. Yeah, you get five euros if you eat one with children. Eat, swallow. Yeah. Put it in your mouth. If you don't like it, you can spit it out. You don't have to swallow. Instantly. We're giving, still giving taste you. Taste it. See if you taste, like the taste of garlic. No. no. <laughs> I'm showing the boy house down. Right, you're going to do it. Ready? Three, two, one. Just do it. Put it in your mouth. Just put the whole thing in your mouth. No! Just put the whole thing in your mouth and just eat it. Okay. Oh, he's done it. Bye bye. And he's chewing it. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> High five you. E eating it as well. Well done, you. There we go. Nice, yeah? Is yours? Yeah. Well done. Oh, no. I don't put it on the I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just putting it on the Just put things we did before. Yeah. We can I really want shrimp now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, mate. Yeah. 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 So, Ted, what do you think? Is it nice? How does it taste? Is it? Good. Yeah? Really tasty? Yeah. So, what's the thought of the Cambodian Hill of Fire? Really. Really good? You yeah. had enough to eat? Is it all good? Well cooked? Yeah. Yeah. And what's been Bam. your favourite part of it, Matilda? Hmm, I really like, like all of it. Do you like the sausages and yeah. the steak and the noodles? And the prawns. Yeah. Fab. In Cambodia, traditionally, you would have things like crocodile or kangaroo, ostrich, um, frogs, things like that. But we opted for very simple foods. We thought we'd already pushed it with the escargot. During an evening stroll on the outskirts of our village, we stumbled across some heavily ripened slow trees that no one was using in the hedgerows. Um, so we decided that we would pick them so we can make some fantastic slow gin. So this is our hoard of slows and as you can see we've got just over 400 grams. Uh, what I'm going to do is rinse these and place them in a bag. Then I'll put the bag in the freezer so it helps split them overnight. So to put all the bits of the gin together, I thought uh, where better to do it than the gin bar. I'm using my Rontoff um, barrel because it's perfectly good enough for, the, for this activity. Uh, in this bag, I have my frozen uh, slaves. I'm going to add those into the pot. And we had just over 400 grams of um, slaves, so I'm going to put into it just over 200 grams of sugar and then we're going to add some gin and uh, it's about a litre of gin I'm going to use this caron it'll be quite a nice flavour to it and all I'll do is give this a good old stir and um, a sort of a shake or a stir once every couple of weeks and then this will be perfect for Christmas
added to that. Start. So I give it a good stir. This officially is my uh, gym stirring spoon. So it's perfect for this. And uh, I'm just going to literally put it on the bottom shelf down here where it's really, really dark um, and perfect for this to steep. Whilst that's steeping, luckily we have one last bottle of the Sojin that we made in 2015. This is uh, really, really lovely, nicely matured. Um, so we'll be ending that this evening. I thought whilst I was here, I'd also show you something else, which is very, very typical to this region of France. I, d I don't know about other regions. A little bit of hooch or moonshine. This is called Calant Cat, um, and it's quite potent moonshine <laughs> that's brewed locally. Um, it's got triple distilled cider, um, and then into that you have an orange, one large orange, studded with 44 cloves of um, coffee. Um, and then 44 sugar cubes, which is why you get the Caron Cat, 44, and you let this steep. And uh, this was from 2013, but I've got some here from 2010. Um, some really, really potent stuff. I've also got some very odd other things in this little cabinet behind me, which we'll bring out right in a second, but things like um, with walnuts and Angelica that my uh, lovely French neighbour who's just down the road says don't touch until at least 2030. Not entirely sure what's in them, but uh, we'll find out in another seven years.